Hi there, this is Sean Sweeney, and I'm creating a screencast today for Mindwing that's going to be talking about this story element of feelings, how you can target feelings using PowerPoint this time of year, which is Valentine's Day, is approaching soon. And also, I'm going to toss in a little bonus at the end about how you can use a poem generator on the internet to help you target vocabulary around feelings and helping kids understand the story element of feelings. So the reason I'm talking about PowerPoint to start is a lot of people think about PowerPoint as simply the tool you would use when you're going to get up and make a speech. And PowerPoint, of course, is good for that, for providing visuals, but it's also a great publishing tool. I made this little um, title slide here with PowerPoint and it's a great thing to start to teach kids um, how to use as they get into upper elementary levels and middle school um, they're going to be asked by teachers to be using PowerPoint and it's great for them to start to build some skills because it's one way that they're going to need to access the curriculum most likely so what I'm going to be talking about is how you can make a Valentine using PowerPoint that um, also hits on the story element of feelings. So first of all, I'm going to actually open a new presentation. Um, when you see PowerPoint, now I realize I'm using um, a little bit of an older version of Microsoft Office. My, everything might not look exactly the same on your computer, um, but they're roughly the same. I'm going to start by pulling up the project gallery and opening up just a new PowerPoint presentation. And PowerPoint always gives you these uh, little cookie cutter formats. I don't want that for this one, so I'm actually going to format the slide layout and make it blank for my Valentine and apply. The key to success with PowerPoint I always find is having the right toolbars open. The one I'm going to use a lot today is this one over here. It's called the Drawing Toolbar. Um, I used it back um, in an earlier screencast when we talked about making a setting map and I really think the the drawing toolbar is really helpful. So I'm going to make sure if you wanted to check it out yourself, you do view toolbars drawing, mine's checked off. I knew that because it's right there. So so I'm going to first think about uh, the background for my Valentine. You can work with kids on um, what kind of background they'd like. I'm going to do format, slide background, and this little minimalist window actually can let you do a lot you can go here to more colors and the crayon picker is my favorite one it's the one that's most accessible to kids but you can use other things like a spectrum or sliders um, or some palettes but I really prefer the the crayon picker so I'm gonna pick something a little more pink this time um, actually no I'm gonna stick with my chair maraschino I like it and say okay and then apply so that was simply how you can make that background uh, for your Valentine. And if I wanted to actually do something a little bit more snazzy, I could do something like a fill effect. Um, I did there to more fill effects. If I wanted to have sort of like a little bit of a texture, you can make it sort of appear like that. Or you can do red and white. As sort of a little bit of a gradient. Um, these allow you to bring up different patterns as well, textures, or you can actually use a picture as the background. I'm going to try that. Looks pretty cool. Okay, so I'll stick with that. Now, one of the great things about PowerPoint is they have a ready to use heart shape. And heart is, of course, great for Valentine's, but it's also the icon in Mindwing's methodology for feelings and helping kids understand feelings. So I'm going to bring up the heart, which is under basic shapes in the drawing toolbar. You just simply select the heart, and then you're going to click and drag to make the size of your heart. Okay, that doesn't match at all. So I, you can then use the paint can over here to um, change the color of your heart. And you might not even want to sort of color code hearts as you go through. Um, 
or you might not. So here's my heart. If I wanted to rotate it, I can select the free rotate tool, which is right here. Try again. Great. And when, I, when an object is selected, you can type right into it. So let's say I wanted to make a valentine that had the six universal feelings, and I'm going to give it to someone, um, or you're asking a, a student to give it to someone in their life. So and you can use the shift return. I held on the shift to, um, to get that to return. And the kids can elicit, you can elicit from the kids what are some events or, or actions of that person that make you feel happy um, so that you're making sort of a, a Valentine statement with the six universal feelings. So um, they could say, I feel happy when, if it was to the teacher, I feel happy when you give us extra recess, etc. You can do some other cool things with the hearts to make them look a little bit more polished. You can add shadow. So I did that and now there's a shadow around the heart. But let's try that again and I'll make one more. You might be interested in making all six. And let's see. I'll make this one red for for mad. If that was for a teacher. So you could do whatever you want to target the six universal feelings, but this is a great way to go because you're automatically also targeting complex sentence formulations with the words with the word when, um, which is helpful for students to develop more complex sentences. Um, you might be interested in using word art, which is over here in the toolbar. You can edit text, you can edit colors with this window, um, format and make, make different things happen. Um, if I want the fill color here to be, again, more red, I can do that. So when you're done with the student, you would have um, six different hearts up here, um, six different feelings represented. Um, you can, uh, one last thing to mention, you can make the lines around the hearts thicker, like that. That makes it look a little bit nicer. You can make the lines different colors using the line color tool. Let's make that one more of a white, or whatever you like in terms of what the student would like to create. It's also a great, um, it would be a great task to use with following directions. If you were to present to the student that they're going to create a valentine and they need to include these six things perhaps, that could be a checklist for the student um, so that they're working on following directions. I'm going to change the font to make it more interesting too. So that would be a nice Valentine's Day project um, for students that would incorporate language that would help emphasize feelings as an essential story element, help get them used to the icon, um, having drawn the icon themselves, they're definitely going to um, have a better sense of what it is. Um, 
you could do multiple slides if you wanted um, this to be, say, the inside of the card. Um, all you would have to do is do insert new slide, okay, or you could insert a duplicate slide. Sorry, not of the blank one. Insert a duplicate slide so that you have one slide that has these. If you want your front and your back of your card to not have these designs but have something else, it will tax your spatial relations to know what you should put where, but I think this side would be the front of the card. And you could decorate that the way you like so that this is the front of the card. This would be inside when you print it out. The other um, resource I wanted to show you is the Poetry Forms website. Um, this link will be with the post. Uh, but the Poetry Forms website is a really fun um, and simple to use website that involves obviously a lot a lot of language but gives kids some structure in terms of the the poetry that they um, would produce and there's a number of poems obviously that have to do with feelings um, one of the more recent ones is emotional animal um, so I clicked on the link over there and this form came up um, so you could use one uh, feeling word here and it, this sort of helps kids also work on metaphor um, the example that's produced is envy is a scavenging hyena. Um, that's done by having them fill in an adjective and the animal name. Um, slinking, tail between his legs on the dry grassy savanna. So here's an action. Here's a phrase telling where the animal lives, which again would be related to setting. Um, and why the animal acts the way it does or possibly how others react to it. So that's great in terms of perspective taking, thinking of what's the kickoff um, for that animal uh, in this particular poem. So with this one poem you could be targeting character, setting, kickoff, feelings. Um, all you do is fill these in you click create my instant emotional animal poem now and it will produce for you below here um, the poem which you can then copy um, you do edit copy you could even paste it into your valentine if you like Another good one that was Emotional Animal, and they have another one which is If Emotion Were A. Um, so this is a lot of um, metaphor that can help kids associate things to a particular emotion. Say, um, if fear were a color, it would be whatever the kid chooses, but maybe yellow. Um, as scared as a blah blah blah. If emotion was a taste, it would just be like, so that's the same emotion. If fear was a taste, it would be just like, and they can put in uh, a food, um, etc. So that could be another um, way to work on emotions, and I'd encourage you to explore over here because there's a lot of great um, forms. Uh, one thing is this is a website, so you really can't save your work um, unless you do copy and paste. Um, so that's really the way you would uh, save your work or start work and then come back to it. Um, would have to be through copy and paste. So that's it for this screencast. So you have some ideas for Valentine's Day and the story element of feelings. Thanks a lot. Enjoy.